Okay, so we've done all of our processing now and we've got our beautiful work of art and we've already taught you how to share it to the web and how to send it as an email and social media, etc. But now it's time to make that beautiful print. And here's where I see people uh, really, really go off track for two reasons. Uh, the number one reason is, and we talked about this early on in the video series, if you have not calibrated your monitor, you don't stand a prayer of getting a print that comes going to come out the way you want it to. Now, I know some of you may have a home printer and you come into your print settings and you can lighten this print up or what have you and change some colors, but it's hit and miss and we don't want that. We want to make it where what we see on screen is what we're going to get back from the print. And by the way, I've uh, gotten rid of all my Epson printers in my office. I do everything on an online lab. And I'm going to show you how we can get great prints with an online lab also. So I'm going to also show you in this video how to do this in both Lightroom and Photoshop. So the assumption is you've calibrated your monitor and now it's time to print. There's a, another step you're going to need to take here, and that's called soft proofing. So here's the image that I would like to print, and I purposely selected this. Generally, the main complaints I hear from my uh, students is twofold. Number one, hey, my print came back too dark. Sound familiar? I know, I've been there. Number two, hey, some of these saturated colors in my picture, and I'm going to show you right up here in top of the Point Sur light station. This is along the Big Sur coast. Uh, that's a saturated color, and I've got to know if my printer or my online printer is going to handle that. So we're going to show you, we're going to start out and show you a big step here called soft proofing. So I am in the develop module in Lightroom, and that's where we're going to start. And if I come down under the print, you're going to see this little checkbox here for soft proofing. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a checkbox in. And some things are going to change up here just below my histogram. And the first thing is I'm going to have an option to create a proof copy. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that because that's basically just creating a virtual copy. Now, I'm going to need to assign a profile. I'm going out to an online lab. And my online lab is bayphoto.com. And they used to want me to send them Adobe uh, RGB 1998. They have since changed. We had a little talk. They do have a generic profile that covers all of their paper surfaces. But their color expert that I've talked to has told me I will actually get better results across the board on all their products if I make my profile sRGB. Generally, uh, most online labs, uh, you're going to get your best results by going to sRGB, but always check with your online lab. I'm going to explain what this red masking that appeared is, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But I also want to come down to the rendering intent. And we get two choices, perceptual, and relative and really the way to see the difference i could explain these they would confuse you i get confused <laughs> the beauty is we really don't have to know what's going on it's just a remapping of colors that aren't going to print based on the paper surface we're going to etc so we can just click and see if there's any difference and you can see in this print from perceptual to relative absolutely no no difference with the srgb um, profile that i assign by the way if you have a home printer epson canon etc um, when you click this profile um, you could click here and add in a bunch of different paper profiles you'd get a box like this and you would just go go through and click put a little check box in on what paper profiles you would like to add. You could see that I added, this was that generic profile I was telling you about from Bay Photo Lab, but actually they're telling me sRGB will give me better results. So I'm gonna go with what they say. I'm gonna cancel out of this. All right, so how do we deal with these colors now that are out of gamut? Well, I'm gonna come back down here to my hue saturation box and I'm gonna click on saturation and I am going to click on the little targeted adjustment tool. I'm just going to stick it inside 
uh, one of these red areas here and I'm going to start to pull down. And as I pull down, uh, when the red goes away, I've gotten that under or I've gotten that now looking more like how their printers going to print that color up in that area. I can do the same thing down in here. I'm going to pull back until most of that red goes away. And now you see the color or the um, the paper or excuse me, the print actually looks a little lifeless. But we can come back up in here under our basic mode because we're in a soft proof mode now. And um, we can maybe add a little bit of vibrance back in. But you see, it's kind of a double edged sword. I'm starting to build in uh, where their paper won't handle it. Uh, I'm also going to try saturation. That's not really going to help me. Um, so sometimes you're just kind of limited by the nature of your print. Um, this is going to print very realistic. And you can see that my shadows here have gotten a little bit dark. So I may want to open up the shadows overall. Something like that. May want to warm the color temperature back up. Whoops, that's not taking it, is it? It's going to, going to get out of gamut. So you have a little bit of a range but you're kind of limited this is the key box you want to come into and again you need to adjust that targeted adjustment tool and then maybe i can get up here and i can bump some of this but um, that's kind of black down in that water i'm not really too concerned about that but i'm kind of thinking you know, i'm going to try to bump that up a little Right about there is as far as uh, I am going to be able to, to push this. Now, a uh, couple of things. I want to come back over here in the library mode. Once we decide we, want it, we do want to go out to print with this, we have to click on the export button. And we're going to have to come down to file setting. And right here is where I could click to sRGB. Now, I did say in an earlier video that some online labs want to be in Adobe RGB. Um, I doubt if you're going to find any online labs that are going to want to be in ProPhoto RGB. Not at this point. So you're really going to have to check with your labs. But if you are with Bay Photo, uh, you would click the sRGB. And that's how it would export the picture in sRGB color mode. So what if, I, what if I do have a home printer now? What if I do have an Epson, a Canon, an HP, and I want to go out to print? Well, come on up here to the top. And there's a print dialog box. All right. And a few things you need to know. Uh, the print resolution, um, you know, there's a lot of debate on this. I actually think 240 is enough. You start going any higher than that, you're kind of wasting ink, in my opinion. I do put back, when I did print at home, a little bit of print sharpening here. You can go lower standard. It's up to you. You're going to have to run some tests. And um, the color management here, we want to manage by printer, okay? Or excuse me, yes, we want to manage by... Um, no, we don't. Hold on a second. We don't want to do that. That's where we want to drop in um, our profile for the for whatever paper you are printing to. I told you it's been a while since I've um, printed to a home printer. So you want to do that. And then if the print's still consistently a little bit too dark, you can click on this print adjustment and bump that up a little bit. Again, you're going to have to run some tests. And I'm telling you, if you have your monitor calibrated, these prints are going to come back just looking just like what you're seeing on screen. So that's how you do it in Lightroom. All right, let's come on down here if I can get my tray to open up and we're going to go to Photoshop. And what if we want to print out of Photoshop? OK, well, we're going to have to come over here where we do our soft proofing and we're going to have to come under view and proof setup. And I'm just going to click to custom and I will get this box coming up. Now, I want to point out a few things. Again, I'm going online to Bay Photo, so I've since gone out of Adobe RGB 98 into sRGB. This little box that says preserve RGB numbers, leave that unchecked. It has absolutely nothing to do with us. That's for commercial printing. The rendering intent, again, you can just leave this preview tagged and you can check this both ways. You actually see we get four choices in here. But saturation and absolute color eye metric are not going to pertain to what we do as photographers printing to either on lab or to a home printer. So don't, I wish Adobe would get those out of there. Uh, they're confusing. But again, um, if um, we had different uh, papers, 
if you're going to an Epson, a Canon, what have you, an HP, then this is where you would pick up the papers and put them in there. And then we do want to leave a checkpoint on black point uh, compensation and display options. Don't worry about anything down in there. And when we hit OK, we're really going to see the um, picture in a soft proof mode. One thing I want to point out for those of you with sharp eyes, you're going to see that I'm still up here in 16 bit mode. So you know it have to go under image mode and convert this down to an 8 bit. You do not want to go out to an online lab in 16 bit. Don't do that. They're going to hate you. That's a huge file. And it's not going to do any difference. Uh, not going to make any difference as to how that, um, you know, if your print's going to come out any better or not. In fact, I think a lot of online labs are just going to send the file back or they're going to convert it to 8 bit on their end. Now, remember, one of the things that we see is shadows tend to block up a little bit in the printing process. So, uh, you know, I, I could come in here and lighten up these shadows a little bit more if I wanted to. We've already gone through that in a number of other videos how to do that. So uh, just make sure that your shadows aren't too dark. We're looking at this as a backlit RGB display monitor, and we're going to be outputting to a printer that's going to be printing in basically CMYK inks. Lastly, when you're viewing the print, make sure you're under some good daylight balance light that's nice and bright, not in a dim room. Uh, you want to get an accurate read on the print. But I'm telling you, if you if you do go ahead, it starts with a good color calibration. I recommend the X the X Right, either the Color Monkey or the i1 Display Pro. Spider's good also. But you have to stay with it, gang, because uh, monitors do shift. They get out of color, they get out of brightness. And right out of the box, as I said, most monitors are at least a stop too bright and a little bit too blue, in my opinion. Uh, let's see, anything else I'm missing here? Uh, once, you're once you are color balanced, um, you have a good profile, keep after it every two months. Just You can set a reminder right inside the software that every two months you want to come back and you want to recalibrate under the exact conditions that you edit. And I recommend um, a dim room and two key settings, your white point, you want to set it industry standard as D65, D65, what, regardless of what, uh, what labs tell you. I have heard different white point suggestions, but this is coming from X-Rite, D65. And your luminance, I would say to be on the safe side, 100 on the luminance. That's for both laptops and home computers. And if you're still a little too dark on your prints, you could drop that luminance value down to 80. Um, again, they make these monitors so darn bright these days for gamers and surfing the web and everything else you do online, but it's not good for us photographers. It'll throw you, you're making your decisions based on what you're seeing on that monitor. And if it's too bright, or the color balance is too blue, you're going to be you're you're going to be making changes that are not going to be reflective when that print comes back from the lab or comes out of your home computer. So that's it. That's how you're going to get terrific prints. You're going to save a lot of ink. Uh, you go to an online lab and you have a big print made. Uh, you can pretty much rest assured it's coming back the way you want it. Um, and I think we've covered everything there. So get that calibration unit if you don't have it. Keep after it every two months. Go through this soft proofing exercise and watch your prints come back looking the way you expect them to.